What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to another short video looking at some basic to intermediate configuration and usage tips for Canon's EOS R5 camera. In this video we're going to be looking at the shutter modes available on the EOS R5. And the camera provides three different shutter modes. These are fully mechanical, electronic first curtain, and fully electronic. So each of these modes have some pros and cons, have some various capabilities that are worth talking about, and that's what we're going to go into in this video. Starting with the fully mechanical mode. So when this is set, if you refer to the manual, the manual says shooting activates the mechanical shutter, and they recommend that this is used when shooting with the aperture of a bright lens wide open. So Fundamentally, this is, behaves exactly as the shutter would on a DSLR traditionally. There is a mechanical first curtain, a mechanical second curtain. The shutter close, or the camera closes the shutter, opens the first curtain, waits for the exposure to happen, closes the first curtain. And this will provide the most consistent, traditional looking image quality or the best possible image quality in all circumstances with respect to it, like I said, at least image quality. So there are some trade-offs using this mode compared to the other modes. One of those trade-offs is an increase in shutter lag. Shooting in the mechanical mode, there's a shutter lag of approximately 81 milliseconds compared to the 50 milliseconds in the other modes. And this is largely due to the fact that when you shoot with the mechanical shutter, instead of just being able to start the exposure, the camera has to close and reset the shutter, then open the shutter to start the exposure. When using the mechanical shutter, the following frame rates are available in continuous shooting. So for continuous high plus, the camera can shoot up to 12 frames a second. In continuous high, the camera can shoot up to 6 frames a second. And continuous low, the camera can shoot up to 3 frames a second. Additionally, the mechanical shutter does limit the X-Sync or flash sync speed to 1 200th of a second. Now on the plus side, this mode allows you to use the entire shutter speed range as provided in the camera without having to go into bulb, though that meaning uh, 30 seconds to 1 8,000th of a second. And it produces a full 14-bit image quali or quality image if, with the exception, I should say, of when shooting in continuous high plus, which is always limited to 13 bits. The second option is the electronic first curtain shutter. And according to the manual, this says the shooting only activates the second curtain mechanical shutter. So essentially, the difference between an electronic first curtain and a mechanical first curtain is that instead of having a physical barrier that moves in front of the sensor, a signal is sent across the surface of the sensor that causes the sensor, the pixels, to reset and begin the exposure. Now, the problem that you potentially can run into with the electronic first curtain sh shutter is that because the plane of the shutters, so the, plane, the surface of the sensor and the plane that the mechanical shutters activate in are not essentially the same plane, the, the timing differences between light passing that distance, and it's only a few millimeters, but light travels really fast, that can cause the electronic first curtain shutter to produce weird or undesirable or imparse properly or incompletely rendered bokeh effects when combined with a very fast lens shot at a very wide aperture, so wide open at very high shutter speeds. So broadly speaking, where you are likely to see this is shooting with an f1 or f1 point or an f1.2 or f1.4 lens wide open at shutter speeds in excess of 1,000th or a 2,000th of a second. Uh, it can show up to a certain degree with slightly slower lenses. For example, I can start to reproduce or I can reproduce some of the problems shooting at f1.8 on one of my lenses at 8,000th of a second but the effect is significantly less at those uh, with that aperture and shutter speed combination and obviously as you slow the shutter speed down the the effect diminishes as does stopping down the lens if you normally are shooting with f2.8 or f4 lenses 
there's virtually no difference or discernible difference between shooting with the electronic first curtain and the mechanical shutter. Now, some of the advantages of the electronic first curtain shutter, obviously it increases or decreases the shutter lag because the camera doesn't have to reset the mechanical shutter. So the shutter lag goes down to 50 milliseconds. And this is the case for both the electronic first curtain and electronic shutter. It also provides a small boost in some frame rates. So uh, continuous high plus is still limited to 12 frames a second or up to 12 frames a second, but continuous high increases from six, up to six frames a second, up to eight frames a second, and low continuous low stays at three frames a second. It also provides a boost to the X-Sync speed. So the seat speed that the flash can fully synchronize with the camera, it jumps from one two hundredth of a second in mechanical to one two fiftieth of a second in, in first curtain electronic. As with the mechanical, it still provides the full shutter speed range, or you can still use the full shutter speed range without having to go into bulb. So 30 seconds to an eight thousandth of a second is available. It also provides full 13 or 14 bit images with the exception again of shooting in continuous high where it drops to 13 bits. And this is compatible with all of the advanced shooting options or complex shooting options such as HDR, HDRPQ, exposure stacking, long exposure noise reduction, focus bracketing, etc. The third option is to use the fully electronic shutter and to quote from the manual enables you to shoot without a shutter sound in continuous shooting. The camera will always shoot at high speed up to approximately 20 shots a second. Also during continuous shooting, a white frame is displayed repeatedly. Uh, essentially the white frame is when they say that they're not talking about a fully white frame, like image, they're talking about a white border around the, um, image in the viewfinder or on the back of the camera and this is essentially there to indicate that the camera is shooting uh, it doesn't interfere with your ability to track subjects or anything like that it's simply a few pixels around the very edge of the frame to indicate that an exposure is being made now shooting with the fully electronic shutter does have some potential image quality issues first of all it's a rolling shutter the same as shooting video in fact it's essentially shooting video, but with the still aspect ratio and sticking it into a still raw file as a, or, or JPEG, as opposed to sticking it into a video file. And some of the, these issues are the most obvious or relevant to these issues is, first of all, it can produce banding with flickering light sources. So band, banding on subjects and then background with a flickering light source. It's not a global shutter. That's a common problem with rolling shutter artifacts in uh, video cameras and with rolling shutters. And of course, the other problem is you are susceptible to the rolling shutter lean when you have a fast moving subject relative to the frame or when you're panning quickly. Now, remember the rolling shutter lean is relative to the frame, not relative to how fast you're panning. So if you're moving the camera quickly to pan with, say, a military jet on an air show that is traveling at several hundred kilometers an hour, that jet, as long as it's staying essentially in the same place in the, in the frame from, you know, during the exposure, isn't going to lean or be distorted the way, say, whip panning across a building would cause the building to look like it's leaning. Uh, now, as I said, as with all electronic shutter modes, the shutter lag is about 50 milliseconds. And as the manual says, the frame rates in all continuous shooting modes are 20 approximately or up to 20 frames a second. So high, high plus and low, all 20 frames per second. One big drawback to shooting with the electronic shutter is while it's in completely or while it's completely silent, it is also not possible to use a flash at all. It does not trigger the sync contacts on the flash. A flash will not fire and the camera will just behave as if there isn't a flash there. So while it sounds like it would be great for shooting in a, a quiet situation, such as a wedding or something like that, you won't be able to use a flash.
It also limits the shutter speed range available on the camera. So it limits the shutter speed range from 30 seconds to 8,000th of a second to half a second to an 8,000th of a second. Again, not a huge limitation if you're shooting high speed or fast action stuff, but you obviously don't want to be in electronic mode when you're trying to shoot long exposures or landscapes. The final limitation of using the fully electronic shutter on the R5 is that it limits the image bit depth to 12 bits. This is essentially, as I said, because it's reading out the camera as it would in video and in video mode, it basically reads out a 12-bit file and or image. And so that's what you get stuck with here. So my recommendation for all of this is basically to use the electronic first curtain shutter. Now, there is a caveat with that, obviously, which is if your thing is to shoot with very fast lenses wide open at high shutter speeds or to shoot at very high frame rates, then you will want to change it to those other modes, either mechanical in the first case or electronic in the second case. And obviously, this is a situational, a situation dependent setting. So you'll want to change things around depending on the situation and needs. However, generally speaking, at least in my experience, shooting with normal lenses being f 2.8 and slower and shooting at more normal apertures of f 5.6 f 8 etc there's no obvious problems to using the electronic first curtain shutter it improves the shutter lag it gives me a faster x-sync speed and it makes the camera a little less um, noisy i guess because you don't have that extra close and reopen of the mechanical shutter so I hope you found that useful or interesting, at least. If you did, please consider smashing that like button, consider subscribing, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.